What is up guys, I bring to you the servant profile of the day, Ku Cullen. He can be summoned as a Lancer, Caster, Berserker, Rider, Saber, and Archer. God damn. His place of origin is Ireland and he's a demigod hero from Irish mythology. His armament is the Gable. It's a cursed spear that was attained from his mentor, Skahawk. The spear is carved from the skull of Karuit, a phantasmal beast that used to lurk within the sea. There is also armor that goes with this spear, but I shall save this for Ku's altar profile. First off, we have class skills. Magic resistance. The rank is C class. If you haven't already, refer to my Karna profile for more details on this level of resistance. Personal skills. Battle continuation. The rank is A class. This allows you to continue a battle even after receiving mortal wounds. Mentally and physically, the person will display a greater aptitude to stay alive than normal. Before his death, Ku told himself that he refused to die laid out on the ground like he was some type of bitch. So, even though he suffered from a fatal wound at the time, he still managed to tie himself up to a tree and leave the world in peace. This reduces the chance of him receiving a fatal wound, and even if he does happen to get one, he's not going down easy. In the fate route of the visual novel, Ku fought against Gilgamesh for half a day. Let's put this into perspective. Gil is the strongest servant in the fate series, period, and Ku was able to hold his own against him for 12 hours straight. He lost, but the fact still remains. The man is no pushover, so if you're coming for him, you better bring your A-game. I personally think that a large part of his survival stems from this skill working with his next one, which is protection from arrows, and the rank is B-class. This ability heightens your defense against projectiles. This includes noble phantasms, giving Gil a run for his money. What's happening is that Ku is able to predict the trajectory of these projectiles by hearing the sound of the air being cut or sensing the killing intent of his enemy. If he's made visual contact with his opponent at least once, he's more than likely going to avoid it. This makes him formidable against the Archer class. Even if his opponent was visually out of range, fighting him at a distance would be useless. One thing to note about the skill is that the projectile must be thrown. It can't be a long range weapon or something that explodes on impact. Disengage. The rank is C class. You see this in the first episode of Unlimited Blade Works, where Ku is clearly being overwhelmed by Artoria, so he throws his spear at the ground in order to disengage himself from that ass whooping. This resets the battle conditions to what they were before. Divinity, the rank is B class, the measure of whether one has divine spirit aptitude or not. He is the son of a mortal woman named Daktine and the sun god Lug, so he's somewhat like the Celtic version of Karna. Rune Magic, the rank is B class. In his lifetime, Ku was granted 18 ancient Norse runes from his mentor Skahawk. She emphasized how it wasn't practical to only be versed at close range combat. Because of this, Ku became adept in magecraft, and he's nearly a first rate magus, but still prefers using his lance, so you don't see it that often. Just to add a little depth here, in the Fate verse, anything before the Common Era, or 0 AD, is referred to as the Age of Gods. That's where these runes come from. Being from this age, they harbor secrets that are closer to the world than any modern day mage could acquire. What people in modern day would call high level magecraft would simply be scratching the surface of low level magecraft for the age of gods. In addition to this, he can temporarily use these runes to raise his skill level to A rank. If Ku was fighting a high profile magus and needed to raise his magic resistance, he could use his runes to bump his resistance from B to A. The only setback is that the runes can only bump up one skill at a time. Gatebolt, barbed spear that pierces with death. The rank is B class. It is an anti-unit phantasm, which means it specializes against one person. 
it is a fatal blow that always pierces the target with a near 100% chance of piercing the heart. How is this possible? Well, the move reverses causality, which means it manipulates cause and effect. For example, let's say Ku doesn't activate the phantasm and uses his lance to pierce someone's heart. Thrusting the lance is the cause and piercing the heart is the effect. What the phantasm does is create a new law that puts the effect in front. So instead of thrusting the lance then piercing his opponent, he would be in fact piercing his opponent first, then thrusting the lance. This is what makes the move so powerful. To start off, we have Ku initiating the phantasm. The air begins to distort and he throws the spear at Saber's feet. Even Shiro is in the back like, wow, this dude's aim is horrible. But what Shiro doesn't know is that no matter where Ku throws the spear, it still redirects toward the target. He could have used an aerial attack and it still would have went straight to her. She clearly catches the lance, but not actually. She's actually already been hit. You'll see a bluish tint. This is the effect freezing the mana in the air. Even if she wanted to counter, she couldn't because the mana in the air is one of the only two sources she can pull her energy from the other being the energy inside her body. So it's literally forcing you to do a low scale attack and Saber doesn't have one. All she has is Excalibur and we know that Excalibur is this huge grandiose move so it would take way too long to initiate. The reason his attack still works is because he's not using mana but strictly the energy he has stored in his body. While she's catching where the lance should be, the lance is actually redirecting its course to prove that him piercing the heart was true. Although this move is executed with the intention of always hitting the heart, there are circumstances where this can be avoided. This would be one of them. The reason for this is because Arturia has a class luck. Now before you call bullshit, I'd just like to note something. A defining characteristic of the Lancer class is that they often die from having low luck. If this is true, wouldn't it be plausible that having the highest luck would avoid certain death? Another circumstance would be Heracles, who's capable of moving even without his heart. But it still stands that no matter how fast, well guarded, or where you run, if you're in range when it's activated, you will get hit. You can only avoid this by being out of range before it even starts. It also puts a curse on whoever gets hit until Lancer dies. Shiro has Avalon, so he's fine, but it did affect Saber in the long run. The move has low energy consumption, which is another reason why he didn't use the mana from the air, because it's such a low costing attack. He can spam this seven times before having to charge his magical energy. So why didn't he spam it seven times against Saber? Because people, that makes way too much sense. Nah, but if I had to make an argument for it, Phantasms thrive on the element of surprise, and he was under a command spell to only observe fights. This means surviving his first battle with every servant, not killing them, then coming back with their strengths and weaknesses. But once again, that raises the question, if you were only supposed to observe, then why would you use a move with a 100% chance of killing? I don't know, maybe I have some type of misunderstanding. Gable. Soaring spirit that strikes with death. The rank is B+. It is an anti-army phantasm, which means it specializes against an army. It is the most powerful attack using his spirit. He converts all his magical energy into his lance, making it a powerful projectile. He backs up 100 meters, crouching on all fours like a dog to signify his role in his lore, dashes forward, and hurls the spear at Mach 2 speed. It is so strong that it distorts space, splitting the weapon into numerous spearheads that rain down over the enemy. The trade-off is that it takes an abundance of energy. It doesn't carry the effect to pierce the heart like the other move either, but the area of effect is so large that it doesn't matter. You couldn't dodge or block it under normal circumstances. And to that description, I can hear Emya laughing uncontrollably in the near distance. The suggestion comes from ID Monster, who says I should do the Fate Extra Servants since the anime starts next year and it will be a good lead up to it. That about wraps it up. If you enjoyed the video, please like it up so we can get this trending. 
feel free to add information as you see fit and let me know what you guys think about it it's your boy Saya. i'm out